Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. This is the Zandier Super Bass Pro. It's a power station with a pure sine wave inverter rated at 2000 watts or 4000 watts peak. It has a NCM battery with 2096 watt hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of its features, charge it up, discharge it, and see what we think about this power station. Let's take a quick tour around the product. Up here on the top, it has a carrying handle that has a spring, which will pull it back down flat. It also has a handle that you can pull out because this unit has wheels that lets you roll this around easily. So we will try that out here in just a moment. So here on the front where all of the magic happens, you got a power button, you got the AC inverter on, you've got the DC on, and this up here is a reset because this has a uh, GPS and a cell signal capability. Over here, you can check the ports. It's got a 100 watt USB type C, two of those, two of the 20 watt USB type C, and then also three barrel plugs, which are 136 watts. It also has a main display right here, which we will get into in just a moment. Down here, it's got a typical car uh, charging port. It's 13.6 volts at 10 amps. It has six of your AC output. So if we move around to the back here, it's just blank. The handle is up there on the top. If you move over to this side, it does have slits for cooling. And then you have your input ports here. So right here is a fuse, it's a 20 amp max. Down here you've got your 60 volt 10 amp input. This one right here is 100 to 120 volt and it says uh, 50 or 60 hertz input. And then you can also connect a ground down there. It does have wheels like I mentioned a second ago. That lets you roll this around pretty easy. And let's go ahead and take a look at the display. Now, whenever this was shipped, the battery was 100% dead. It was at zero. Wouldn't even turn on with the power button. So I had to plug it up for a couple minutes just to get 5% on there so that it would at least show this uh, display for us here. So zero watts on the output, zero watts on the input, 5%. And it has a little indicator that goes around and it's just got two little lights blinking right there. It's got zero hertz and uh, 999 minutes right there. So let's go ahead and push the DC button. Down here, it's got DC on. We can turn that off. Push AC. Kicks on a fan real quick. It is already set to 60 Hertz. Along with the power station, there is this little pouch of goodies. It has a water resistant zipper there. This is where the cables are kept. So there's your typical AC plug. This one right here I've never seen before. It's got MC4 for the solar, but also has this type of adapter on the other end, like uh, your AC type adapter. Uh, so that's definitely unique. It also has this right here, which is another MC4 on this side, and a, what is that, a, a XC90, XC60? I think it's a 60. Anyhow, uh, this case also has a little user manual down here, which you can scan for the app. And it has some real basic information on this side. And if you turn it over, it's got a bit more helpful stuff on this side. Strangely, they also include a bunch of stickers. So if you're into putting that on things, you can go ahead and do that. It has a warranty card in here. It has a warranty card and also comes with a little adapter to go from a USB type C to a USB um, A right there. The pouch is nice, but I have a feeling as soon as you unwind these cords, it's going to be hard to get them back in here. Um, even with just this AC cable, let's see how well that does. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult. So it'd be nice if this was just a tiny bit bigger. I'm gonna take this up to the house and charge it with the AC power, and that will give us a full battery so we can test out the different DC outputs, the AC outputs, and then do a full discharge test after that. Something interesting, I have a 1000 watt inverter here in my off-grid studio, and it allowed this to charge at about 200 watts. Whenever I plugged it up to the house power, it then kicked into about 1600 watts, which is pretty good. 
All right, so that means it is now at 100% charge. Now, one thing to note, whenever you have this plugged up to the AC power of your house, it's gonna kick on the fan and leave that fan running. So even once the unit is at 100% charge, it will still have that fan consuming some power. I think it was somewhere around 20 to 25 watts that it was pulling. All right, let's go ahead and try out some of the DC ports here. So let me go ahead and hold the power button for a second. Get this unit turned on. All right, it's got 999 uh, minutes and then it's at 100%. I have to use the adapter in here that was included for USB. So I'm gonna plug this right here into those. Let's do the, uh, the 20 watt first down here. And then I can do a, uh, a USB cable. All right, first of all, let's go ahead and see if it will charge up this uh, little uh, wireless speaker here. Yep, it immediately turns this little light on. And that is consuming two watts right there. This is for a flashlight. Let's see if it's going to charge this. Yep, the light turns green right there, meaning that it is charging. So those USB ports do work just fine. Now it is a little bit annoying not to have a traditional USB type A. Um, so you have to have that little adapter and they only provide one. So if you have multiple USBs, you're gonna have to get the um, USB type C to USB mini or whatever you're using uh, adapter. So, all right, next let's go ahead and plug up the uh, car port over here. I've got a little compressor, pop this little tab over here. You need to turn on the DC button right here. All right, that compressor turns on immediately. Let's listen to it. That port is also working just fine. Now keep in mind that after you've used your AC or DC, you need to turn off that uh, switch or else it will drain the battery down. I've got a 200 watt LED panel that we can test out the AC side on. So I've just turned the AC on, the fans have begun to run, and now I can simply plug this up to one of those AC outlets. For instance, this one right here, turns that light on. And let's check out here, 195 watts being consumed. Let's see if there's any flicker on this LED. I don't think it's showing here on camera, but I am seeing a slight flicker in real life. That is oftentimes a sign that maybe the uh, pure sine wave inverter is not quite as pure sine waves as we would like. I'm not sure how well this translates on camera, but I just hooked this light up to a different power station brand and there is zero flicker. So. Yeah, the uh, Superbase Pro does have a flicker on this LED panel. Now that we've tested that everything is working properly there on the outputs, let me go ahead and make sure this is charged back up to 100%, and then we will do a full discharge test. Power station is fully charged back up to 100%, so let's go ahead and do a discharge test. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use this little heater and a timer, and we will see um, what the uh, watt hours end up being here. Let's go ahead and turn this unit back on. Hold that for two or three seconds. There we go. All right, I'm gonna plug this up to one of the AC outlets over here. Get my stopwatch ready. I'm gonna turn this heater to the second setting. So let's go ahead and push AC on. Okay, there we go, 60 Hertz. All right, let me crank this up to number two. Push the start button here. Decided to go ahead and put it all the way to setting number three. And we've got right at 1200 watts here on the output. 1,186 or so. And it says it's gonna run that for 1.9 hours right here. So what we're gonna do is see what the stopwatch says, knowing that it's got roughly 1200 watts. And then uh, we'll see what this hour says as well to see how well it actually performs. The time is an hour and 37 minutes. Let's see how we're doing here on our battery. We've got 4% left, so it's running at uh, 1,190 roughly on the watt. So, all right, just dropped down to 3%. So we are getting real close here. One thing worth noting is that it's maintaining full watts even when it's down to 2%. Some power stations will drop down the watts as it uh, gets closer to a 0% on the battery. So this thing is, here we go, 1%, getting real close, zero. All right, and our official time 
is, let's just say, an hour and 40. The Superbase Pro has a rating of 2,096 watt hours. So let's see how we did here on the math. So it ran for an hour and 40 minutes, which is 1.667 hours. So 1,200 watts times 1.667 is two kilowatt hours. So this thing was 96 kilowatt hours away from being uh, perfectly to spec. So it fluctuated up and down a bit instead of just being right on 1200. So I'm going to call this great. So what is that percentage here? So if we say uh, 2000 watts times uh, 100 divided by 2096, 95.4%. So this is actually one of the better power stations I've ever seen with uh, the battery capacity. So the Superbase Pro has been charged so far with AC power, but now it's time to try out the solar power. So let's go ahead and open this up. You can see it has the MC4 cables here. So we'll have to use the included MC4 adapter cable to connect to this panel. So this is actually a rather heavy panel. Let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. So here it's got a Velcro pop out that allows you to angle this into the sun. It does have a water resistant zipper up here to house that cable. It has a nice rubber sewn in handle. If you flip over to the back, it has another one of those feet that pops out and then the panel itself will fold out when you undo this Velcro here. And yeah, open this all the way. It has four different flaps that will angle up into the sun and allow this to charge up our Super Base Pro. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna stand up each of those Velcro legs. The provided cable seems quite long, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this up into the input down here. Now I would recommend that you keep this unit out of the sun whenever you're charging it, so placing it behind the solar panels would be a good idea. Some clouds just covered the sun, but we'll see if we can still get some power out of this unit. One nice thing about the MC4 connectors is that they only allow the cable to attach in one specific way. Just plug that up, plug that one up. Okay, I just heard a beep on the power station. Let's see what kind of watts we get here on a very overcast day. I can't tell if you can see that or not, but it's got 46 watts coming in. Hopefully you can. Here we go, there's 112. So right there it's got 57 watts coming in. It's gonna take 46 hours for this to charge. Well, it's very cloudy out. We're seeing 37 watts at 61 hours to charge this. If I see a gap in the clouds, I'll step back here and film it. All right, there we go. One brief moment of sun, and I saw it jump up to uh, 191. There's 180, 191, 193. <laughs> I doubt you can see that. It's not showing up here on camera. Um, so the highest I've seen at this position is 193. 194, 195. Excellent. So. For a panel like this to hit 195 watts is actually really good. 196. Okay, very nice. Man, the uh, Zandier Superbase Pro has actually impressed me. On a nice sunny day, this panel right here will be able to charge this unit at about 195 watts continuous, which is a pretty good deal if you're camping or out in the woods. We had a lot of cloud coverage today, but there were a few times when I had an opening to the sun and I saw almost 200 watts on this panel, which is quite impressive. I wanted to uh, take a closer look at this now that we're back in the shop. This thing weighs almost 19 pounds, so it's rather heavy. Um, so from the top, it's got a rubberized handle that is sewn in. It's got the semi waterproof bag here that opens up and that allows you to store your cables in here. So uh, it has plenty of room to go ahead and leave this long MC4 cable connected. Um, so uh, on the bits here, it does have positive and negative, so it's pretty easy to see. It's also got um, little tabs here that show that, and also you can't mix these up because they 
only go in one direction. Uh, so that is the bag itself that holds this together. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the MC4 because I want to test out if they will all go back in the storage bag here in just a moment. So you got the uh, Zendir logo right here, and then it's got the tabs I was showing you a moment ago. And it also has grommets on here. So if you want to hang this panel from uh, say, you know, your car roof or something like that, then you certainly could do it with those. Yeah, if we open this back up, it's got the four fold out sections and the panel is coated so that it will not be getting wet. Although I would probably bring this back in if you knew it was gonna have a uh, big storm out. All right, so that's the panel. I'm impressed with it. I think that right there will last quite a long time. Now, the one thing I wanted to try is, uh, is this pouch gonna be big enough to store the cables that are supposed to fit in here? So I'm gonna go ahead and open everything up as if we were using it on a regular basis. Jumble mess. <laughs> I predict that it's not gonna go in here all that great. Let's just see how we do here. There's one. All right, that's probably about the cable management that I would have with this unit. <laughs> I mean, already you'd have to really force that in there. So, um, okay, to be honest with you, the size of this pouch is about the only thing I'm not pleased with with this unit. Now this does have the NCM batteries. And so people say they're a little bit less safe than your lithium iron phosphate. Um, I think the, uh, what is it, runaway temperature is like 100 degrees less than uh, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, but anyhow, um, that would also make this unit a lot heavier than it currently is. So uh, I like this unit. It has impressed me. The battery has worked well and the output seemed to be good also. Um, so cable management, a little bit crazy, but everything else seems to check out. Just a couple things to note out of the user manual here. Model number ZDSBP2000. The capacity, 2,096 watt hours. The AC input max is 1,800 watts. It has either 100 to 120 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. It has a XT60 input for the solar and that's 600 watts max. The AC output is 2,000 watts, has a peak of 4,000 watts. It can do 50 or 60 hertz. The dimensions are 17 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches by 13 and 0.8 inches. It is 46.5 pounds and it can operate discharge negative four degrees up to 140. And you can charge this from 32 degrees to 113 degrees. One thing I forgot to mention is that I actually used this big handle to roll this down the hill in front of my house and it worked out pretty good. The wheels are a little bit small for that, but the handle is nice and sturdy and there was no flex whatsoever in the case of this power station as I used that handle to uh, pull this down the hill. So um, definitely a good feature to have because at uh, almost 50 pounds, this unit is heavy enough that if you can, Rolling it around is definitely the way to go. I've reviewed a lot of power stations here on the Land of House channel, and this one right here seems to be a good one, except for being shipped with a fully discharged battery and this little case being a little bit small to hold all of the cables. I think this unit is pretty good. I will have a link to this in the description down below if you want to check it out. There are some features I did not quite cover, which would be the, uh, the connectivity through the apps, um, but I will perhaps do that in a later video. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.